No. So it's after six. You ready? Yep. Okay. I'll call the uh, June 23rd uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting to order. Uh, you would all please uh, rise and join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first order of business, approval of minutes from the meeting of June 9th. Guys. Yep. So, John, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the June 9th meeting. Motion made. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Um, the meeting of June 16th. Um, I move to approve those. Motion made to approve. Right here, second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Right. Aye. Right. Okay. Next order of business is approval of warrants. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve school warrant number 1063 for $115,874.67. General and school warrant 1064 for $47,619.51. General warrant number 106. Five for one hundred fifty-three thousand four hundred seventy-two dollars and forty-three cents, and payroll warrant number twenty-six for four hundred sixty-four thousand five hundred ninety-seven dollars and eighty-five cents. So moved. Second. Motion made. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Um, financial items. We have transfer requests. Mm -hmm. None of the originals. Um, <clears throat> so I get a transfer request from, oh, this is a reserve fund request. Yeah, the first two are reserve fund requests. Um, police salary account, they're asking for $1,340.92 to balance out the salaries due to um, the promotion of Chris Donius to sergeant. It was a $3 pay increase and uh, it wasn't included in the FY20 budget that happened halfway through the year. So I know the Finance Committee has about $18,000 left in their reserve fund. Um, so I'll obtain a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the next one is a reserve fund transfer request uh, for the police overtime, um, and this one was to pay the overtime for the um, the protest march that occurred a couple of weeks ago. So we were 1246.05 short to handle that event. Uh, so I'll obtain a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. A motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, now we got transfer requests. <clears throat> the Board of Selectmen are requesting to transfer $187.50 from sick leave buyback to the purchase of service. Uh, that's the remainder of the balance needed for the laser show that came out of the beach uh, for the most part. So moved. Second. Which means second at all in favor? Right. Aye. 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 Uh, question on that. What was that? Is this, uh, I'm just curious, is this the laser show for the 4th of July? Yes. So have there been other funds appropriated for that event already? Um, for the laser show? For, for the, uh, I guess, yeah, for the laser show. You said that was just the remainder. Yeah, uh, we transferred money from the beach account. To cover the cost, so uh, and that was just uh, 187 dollars that the money in the beach account uh, didn't handle. 
Okay. And that was previously appropriated uh, at a different meeting? It was, um, when last did we week. do that? Did we do that last week? Yeah, yeah last week. Request for transfer from sewer salary other to sewer superintendent salary of six dollars. Uh, I guess they forgot to budget for the leap year. So moved. Second. Uh, motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, sewer salary other to sewer salary assistant. Ninety dollars and sixty-eight cents, and that's another uh, leap year under funded line item. I move to approve that. Second. Motion we'll made, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, from sewer salary other to sewer salary operator account again because of the leap year, he didn't count for that salary. And that one's 48504. So I'll move to approve that. Second. Uh, motion made, second. All in favor on that. Aye. 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 So, learning opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> He'll forget because of Was the this his first time. leap year? He hasn't been with us that long, so. Yeah, yeah. this would be his first leap year. He'll write it down so we won't yeah. do it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> This is the last one we have, correct? Um, planning board advertising and planning board supplies for a total of four twenty-seven fifty to the planning board revolving revenue account. Revolving fund shows a negative four twenty-seven for the second year in a row. So um, I think they have to bring that revolving account up for the accountants. So that's the. Um, that's a request for the transfer on that. Is that just, we have a budget, Why? I wonder if that, is the revolving account different than the planning board budget? Yes, okay, yeah, the revolving account stays from year to year, so in the general budget, if you don't use money in the general budget, yeah. it comes to the uh, free cash money. Right. The revolving account is fees, um, and it's set by He's town meeting, yeah, yeah, up to fifteen thousand dollars. So you okay. take into the revolving, and the planning board can spend from the revolving. Yeah. Uh, but it showed four hundred twenty-seven dollar and fifty cent shortfall. Yeah. So um, Nancy needs, for accounting purposes, to have that balance out. Right. So. I'll remind Bill. Yeah. I'll move to approve that. Second. Okay. Motion made second on that. All in favor? Aye. Uh, um, and then CDBG grant. This grant money on yes. the invoices. <laughs> so what are we approving here? The seven thousand eight ninety one thirty four. <clears throat> And then there's a second one for Leonard Engineering. So there's two different invoices? Yeah. One invoice is for a total of 7,891.34. And what is this covering? Oh, the Housing Rehab Program mm -hmm. and the Westside Infrastructure Plan. Are they doing another house? I have heard. <clears throat> They've got two, and I'm. I think I have three more contracts coming in. They come, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a worthwhile program because Absolutely, they're, they're yeah. helping these people out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the second one's eight thousand three hundred seventy-one dollars for Lennard Engineering, and that's the West Side Neighborhood Improvement Project. So I'll make a motion to approve. 
Both invoices? So moved. Second. Uh, motion made second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. What else do we got? Do we have any old business? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Um, so on to new business, we have um, Donald Doe has written to inform us that as of July 1st, he will no longer be able to fill the position of electrical inspector, um, and we need to appoint Troy Brown as the new wiring inspector. So I guess I'll obtain a motion to accept the resignation and um, appoint um, Troy Brown. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion we had on that at all? Uh, I, I just want to say that Don has been doing it. He wasn't exactly sure, but he's been doing it for 18 to 20 years wow. uh, as our electrical inspector. And I just want to thank him. Uh, it's a thankless job going into people's houses, nights and weekends, on your own time, uh, doing this stuff. And uh, he's, he's a really good guy, and I'm sorry. I'm going to miss him. Uh, as an electrical inspector in town, but Troy is Troy has been assistant for quite a few years, and uh, he he knows he knows what's going on, and he's willing to take it on. Uh, and we have an assistant, uh, Keith. Oh, Keith Fontaine. Keith yeah, Fontaine has a, agreed to be the assistant, so at some point we'll have to uh, approve the tool. Okay, so, yeah, so why don't we do that now? I'll obtain a motion to appoint yeah. Troy Brown as the wiring inspector and Keith Fontaine as his assistant. John, you may be able to answer this better. Will that affect his ability to inspect? Because he does a lot of work for the town. He has an assistant. Okay. So if, if Troy does work for the town, mm -hmm. Keith can inspect it. Okay. And vice versa, if oh, Keith works. All yeah. Right. yeah, they can't inspect their own work, but yeah. they, they need somebody else to inspect. Yeah. 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 Yep. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Uh, motion made and second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, next is a one-day pouring license for Stillhearts, um, and that's for the event on the common. So we have an um, insurance binder and the activity um, from, I think, I said I said one o'clock, but I don't know. Um, I would think one o'clock would be sufficient to start, right? Yeah. Unless you wanted to start it earlier. No, one's fine. One o'clock. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and we have their insurance on file. I do. Yes. Um, so any. So they're having something off campus. It still hurts. Yeah, it'll yeah. be on the. Um, one corner of the common, we're going to have it all hay bailed off so people can just get a beer and um, stay in a confined space and not room mm -hmm. around. Um, <clears throat> so that is a one day pouring license. So, I'll that's that is that for I didn't have it totally filled out because I didn't have all the information, but just beer or all alcohol. As far as I know, it's just beer. They weren't. I don't know. Yeah, I think just beer is fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I have to get him to sign it, but um, do you know what approximate number of attendants? Um, it's hard throughout the day. I, yeah. I'm guessing we have 250 hamburgers and hot dogs donated from Hannaford's. So that's the number I could use and throughout right. the day. I don't think they'll be there all at the same time, but throughout the day, okay. I'm thinking that's going to be. Let's see where she I move to approve it. Second. Uh, motion made second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so that's that. Sign a contract for the new phone service. Oh wow, look at all the stickies. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's Tara's baby. Is it just one signature or is it new? Yeah, um, just Dale. I think it might be just Dale. Uh, so um, we're upgrading the phone system at the uh, town offices, all the town offices, because um, the one we have is seriously lacking. 
we cannot transfer a phone call from the town clerk to the Board of Selectmen's office, which is right across the hall, so that's <laughs> problematic. Uh, yeah, so when you, <laughs> when you call one office, um, mm -hmm. they have to tell you, sorry, here's the number, call back. So that in this day, with a string and a couple yeah. of cans, yeah. <laughs> yeah. or just holler yeah. in the hall. Yeah, you got to call. Yeah, we can't, um, we can't record any calls or or do any of that. Um, we can't like put people on hold. On hold, yeah. So yeah, it's quite um, old. <clears throat> and we have uh, we have money for the um, CARES Act, COVID Act, yeah. um, can upgrade IT infrastructure needs. So. Um, I had put in for that money. Mm -hmm. So this is being covered by that money. Nice. So, uh, That's all the phones in the town office will be replaced? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the all system. the phones that we have on the, the system, right? <clears throat> or is it just town hall? Just it's town. just town hall. Okay. But it's, I think Tara said it's easily, we can easily add oh, other, yeah. Okay. Uh, and I believe the, um, this is just for the one-time charges. It's five thousand eight hundred fifty-seven ninety one-time upgrade charges, and then the phone service itself is the same as what we budgeted for. Yes. So it's not going to cost us any more money to run it. So right. this is just the scale-up cost. So um, I'll entertain a motion to. So thanks to the COVID, we get two phones. Yeah. <laughs> So is there a motion to approve that, or? So moved. Second. And we'll in second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's all the stuff we had for the agenda so far? Yep. <clears throat> okay, public comment period. Anybody? Anybody? Ethan, go ahead. Sure, so I, um, I'm sorry if this is something that you have already discussed at your last meeting, um, but I just wondered if you might uh, talk a little again about what is happening on the 4th and what the town is uh, planning to spend on that, where it's coming from? Uh, sure. Um, so um, we're having a parade at uh, starting at 10 o'clock. Uh, it will meet and line up at the fire station up uh, School Street. And then um, we're going to go in reverse order from Memorial Day. So it'll go up Main Street uh, to Grove and then down Grove to the Common. And then we have um, like we have some things planned that we missed. So we have a, a scaled back version of Memorial Day. Um, we have a dedication for the town that we've prepared that we're going to announce. Um, what else do we have? We were gonna read the names of the high school graduating seniors. There were some of them planning to march, so we were gonna recognize them and the, um, uh, their accomplishment. And then the um Raise and lower the flag, taps, read the names of oh, all yeah, the reading deceased the names veterans of the in the last year. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and then we have uh, activities planned for the common. So most of it um, is paid for by donations. We mm -hmm. have um, uh, we have donations from Hannaford's for the food. We have um, donations from North Brookfield Liquors for some stuff. We have, um, who else? I'm waiting here from Algu. I left a message on Al. Yeah, I think Algu, uh, we got some money from um, an anonymous donation. Um, and the playground committee had some money, the finance committee put in some money, and we transferred some money from the beach. So that's where. Um, I also got another donation today for fifty dollars specifically for this event from Kathy Krubier. Okay. So. Um, yep. Yeah, so some some money being donated, um, and then the board of selectmen have put in some 
of our money. So that's where the money's coming from. Do you have any other info about the events that you've actually planned for the con? What's happening on the Um Yeah, we, we, well, we have um, the, um, we have a couple, of, we have some music being provided by, um, that's who I forget to mention, Tequila Mockingbird. Um, they're, they're donating the sound system for some music. We have uh, events planned throughout the day for uh, kids and adults. Um, and then at night in the evening is the laser light show. Uh, we were too late to get fireworks. We couldn't get permitting in time and um, it was insanely expensive, so. Um, light show at 9 p.m. Yep, so at 9 p.m. there'll be a laser light show. It's a patriotic laser light show. It's a reasonable facsimile, but not as exciting, uh, mm -hmm. obviously, as fireworks. So um, I think at one point the, the playground was planning to have a s'mores thing for the kids, a little campfire thing with s'mores. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, so am I missing anything? I think Jason and I may or may not do a duet once we see how the sound system is. Oh, yeah. The, the highway yeah. super. No, you and I, we, <laughs> may, we may or may not. So. Yeah, I think one of the part, part of the sound system that Tequila Mockingbird provides has the ability for the karaoke stuff, so uh, that may be a, that may be a small portion of it. <laughs> it all depends on the beer garden. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. But to follow up with that, I just want to just sort of make a statement both for myself and on behalf of the Board of Health. Um, so number one, I just want to point out, I believe the parades are prohibited until phase four. I believe live music is still not yet prohibited outdoor, uh, not yet allowed outdoors. So then also, just, this is just what I've written here. Um, so speaking as a member of the Board of Health, as well as a resident in town with children and aging in laws, um, I want to advise the Board of uh, Selecting to reconsider and cancel this 4th of July event. A uh, public gathering of this size with the attractions described that you've just mentioned, including a parade, music, food, um, as you put it, you know, games for children, um, potentially s'mores. Um, it poses a serious health risk to North Brooklyn residents and is also in direct opposition to state regulations and guidance regarding COVID-19. Um, with COVID cases continuing to rise around the country, um, uh, as well as in North Brookfield, um, health officials are unanimously warning uh, against the likely of, of the likelihood of a second wave. Um, so this is, without a doubt, in, in my opinion, um, not the time to risk the health and safety of people that you, the Board of Selectmen, claim to represent. And just for the public record, I do want to read um, what the uh, the current guidelines are on this? Yeah, I think people can uh, look up the current guidelines for themselves. They're out there. Um, I'll yeah, just so point I'm out to read them. For, So people will know the guidelines are from June 6th. They're called the Revised Order Regulating Gatherings Throughout the Commonwealth. And okay. And the majority of the things that, that you are um, uh, presenting. And yeah. Proposing. All right. So uh, now it's my turn. Uh, you say that the the incidents are on the rise, and that is uh, factually inaccurate. Uh, I've been on the website every single day, and I've seen, uh, as a matter of fact, they are on the historic decline. Uh, North Brookfield has 16 cases reported throughout this um, entire event. On June 5th, the state came out with their updated guidelines because most people were noting that the number of reported positives and the number of deaths um, had a huge gap of 80 something thousand people. So on June 5th, the, the state came out with the, the, um, uh, the new viewpoint that 21 days past a positive test, you are considered recovered. So in North Brookfield, we have two possibly um, currently active cases out of 16. Uh, and I can't find the date that the last two uh, became positive. So, uh, and uh, the position of the board on this issue is if 
Black Lives Matter can protest Amen. down the center of Main Street, on a sidewalk, all on top of each other, and congregate on a church common, all on top of each other, then the people of North Brookfield can march separated down Main Street onto the town common, where I will note that the regulations say that the um, people can gather outside in the public in unlimited numbers, uh, and that's per the Board of Health agent that you hired and we had a meeting at the Board of Selectmen's office with John Alphen present, and she said to him that the event, um, as presented by us, is not prohibited by the regulations. So we'll follow uh, your Board of Health agent's advice on that. But your opposition is duly noted, uh, and uh, you know you have the right to say what you say, and we appreciate it. All right. Anything else to be said by anybody? Anything from you? Anything? <clears throat> Anybody what, else? What was that, Tina? You don't want to hear me speak about that. I just repeat what Dale said about the protest. <clears throat> what well, by my house twice, and they were um, all on top of each other. Yeah, and of course, if if um, people don't feel comfortable, we're not we're not forcing not anybody to join. Right. So if you don't feel comfortable being in that setting, please don't be in that setting. Um, so. What happens to the people who work with the people who are in that setting who have no control over that? Or who go to school with those people? Or who are family members with those people? Um, so if you follow the, guy, the, the, um, the daily dashboard from the Commonwealth, you will see that um, out of the 7,800 deaths that we have had in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, 4,900 of them have been long-term care facilities. So that means 2,000 plus people have died of this infection. So getting the virus is not a death sentence, and it's not, um, as a matter of fact, it's 2% if you take out the long-term care facility deaths, 2% of the people die. Uh, it's 98.2% of all the people that do get it that die have underlying conditions. Uh, obesity and diabetes being the number one underlying condition. So um, I, in the board of selectmen, uh, collectively, do not think that this is the, um, the problem that other people are saying. And I think if you, if you really do the numbers um, that is the case. That's the case across the country, too. The, the states that stayed open may be seeing a number of more positives, uh, and that's because they're testing more, but um, the number of people in hospitals and the number of people on ventilators are down 93% in the Commonwealth. And if you go to mass.gov and click on the COVID-19 dashboard every single morning, those numbers are staring you in the face. So I encourage anybody that really wants to look themselves go on the dashboard and see what's actually happening. So, I just want to make one last comment with all due respect, Dale. I would honestly trust the myriad of national and international medical experts who have said the opposite of what you were saying, as you are not a medical doctor, nor a uh, immunologist or anything of that nature. I don't want to argue about this. I just want to state that for the record. I think that, that you are not qualified to make that decision when other people have already made that decision. All right, thank you. May I address him and ask him why the playground got shut down? Um, I don't know what Yeah, no, is. you'll have to address that at a Board of Health meeting okay. with the Board of Health. Um, all right. I don't think this is the right venue to be. All right. Um, all right, anything else? Anybody else? Public comment period? Uh, I'd just like to say that the uh, Historical Museum is open. Uh, by appointment, so if anybody wants to, needs to come down to check it out, if you research or anything, contact me either through our Facebook page, uh, which is getting really popular, so it's contact me through that, or you can just Google the Historical Society, my contact information is on there. So uh, if you do come down, bring a face covering, and we have gloves. Excellent. And, uh, Hand sanitizer. Soap and water. Yeah. Okay. Do you need that's sanitizer down there? We have plenty in the town offices to. Well, so actually, soap and water is supposed to be better, and we, that's what we have. So, 
Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're saying now the sanitizer has something toxic in it. Well, some of the sanitizers can be toxic. Yeah. They're, and they're starting to hurt people. I heard that on the news. Uh, I don't know what brand today was. Yeah, and it tastes wow. funny. It they, yeah, you <laughs> don't drink it. <laughs> if, you, if you wash with soap and water, the, like, Happy however many minutes they tell you to. 20 seconds. Happy seconds. Yeah. It's yeah. much more effective yeah. than yeah. hand sanitizer. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, on, on that note, Brandon, I want to thank you for posting all those things on your page, on the historical page. The, the people in town are loving it. Uh, they're eating up all that information. It's, it's really good what you're doing. I think I saw John Tripp in one of the horse and buggies. <laughs> I was in one of those, yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought he was uh, building the railroad back in the yeah. 1874. Yeah. <laughs> we whacking along it. Oh, oh, you brought up the railroad. On another note, uh, we have, I believe, one more day uh, work on the railroad uh, rail trail, and I think we'll be at Route 9 in East Brookfield. Uh, we worked hard last weekend. I had uh, five or six guys down there, and we cleared a lot of brush. And I think in one day, if I can get five to ten people down there, we can uh, get that cleared out so we'll, we'll be able to see Route 9 uh, after this weekend. So thank you, everybody. That That'll be Saturday, you said? Saturday, <clears throat> yep, yep. So if anybody wants to volunteer, anybody watching tonight. Uh, you think you're going to get all the way to Route 9? I do. We're pretty close. That's pretty, pretty dense close. in that. Yeah, but I walked we're pretty, in through that. <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> all right. I want somebody to be standing at the other end with a bottle of water for me. <laughs> <laughs> or all whatever right. else they bring. <laughs> um, we're that close. So. Oh, cool. Oh, right. and I... What, you get something? Well, no, it's 6.30, so we got to... Right, um, yeah, well, we got one more thing we have to do um, before that. Um, mm -hmm. Jennifer, I totally forget that you were on the agenda <laughs> tonight. I'm sorry, but... Um, That's okay. We have an application to uh, fill the town accountant's position. Um, Nancy came back to help us out on an emergency interim short-term basis, so we need to fill that accountant's position um, and we're hoping to have Nancy train this person because Nancy is um, is very good at what she does and she's very organized so that would be the person to learn from so we do have um, we only have one applicant that's put in um, put in a resume uh, and it looks very good to me I mean, with the uh -huh background in municipal government, financing. Software? A lot of software. And business? Yeah. I did notice when I was reading all this stuff, you forgot a comma. Oh. <laughs> I appreciate just, your I feedback. Just, I'm just saying. All people. Yeah. I don't really. Yeah. <laughs> you have any, yeah. It's typed though. It is typed. <laughs> I'm just. Um, Other than that, it was perfect. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, so um, why don't you... Um, give me the spiel? Yeah, give me oh, the spiel. Right. My name's Jennifer Marquis. Can you come up? Yeah, 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 he needs to get you on there. So, yeah. yeah, right over here is good. Yeah. My name's Jennifer Marquis. I live in town with my husband, John. We've lived here for about four years now. I have a brother-in-law in town as well, and another brother-in-law moving here. Um, I've worked, as Dale said, I've worked in municipal government for the last five years. I used to be a resident of Bolton, and I was pretty interested in connecting with my community, really, uh, which is why I took the job for the town of Bolton, I work as the assistant town clerk. Prior to that, as you'll see from my resume, I worked in financial services. I ran a large development organization and support organization um, providing record-keeping services for shareholders and participants. If you have a 401k or a 403 b it's likely that our system record kept every transaction on that system. So whether it's commission statements, front end, you know, web processing, um, pretty much soup to nuts from all financial record keeping, um, we executed. I've also worked in the tax industry um, performing uh, tax processing, again, with a focus on software. Um, so I, when I joined the town of Bolton, I had the opportunity to participate in the Mass Municipal Graduate Program. Um, I was happy to take advantage of that opportunity. It gave me a chance to learn a lot in a really short period of time. And also, I think importantly, form a large support network 
of people across the Commonwealth in a variety of roles. So if there's a question, if there, you're already kind of plugged in, both from the instructor mm -hmm. level as well as from the participant level. Um, so that's kind of the spiel. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have, though, as you look at the resume. Have you met Nancy yet? I have, yes. I was in the other night. Um, I had the chance to connect with Tara as a new clerk, and mm -hmm. um, we were sort of helping each other out. I was in the other night uh, working with Tara, and I, had a I did have a chance to meet Nancy, mm -hmm. just very briefly. That's actually how I learned about the position, to tell you the truth. Okay. We were chatting, and it came up. So, I mean, I love the three-minute commute. I'll be honest about that. <laughs> so that's a real draw. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I it will doesn't say, get much better than that unless right, you work from home. Right, agreed. agreed. You said you have a brother in town? I do. Uh, yes. No, not my brother, my brother-in-law. Brother-in-law, and yes. somebody else is moving to town? My, my husband's other brother's moving to town. Cool. On, uh, I want to say Donovan Road, but I'm not 100%. If the, courts, if the courts would ever open up to do the title work on his place, he would be here already. So there's mm -hmm. something in town that's attracting people to it. Yeah, I think yep. that the um, family has been a big attraction. It's a yep. place where we can you know, sort of all have a home base and be mm -hmm. close. In this day and age, that's not the easiest thing to do. Yep. So we're happy about that. Excellent. Good. Um, and um, we'll have to sit down and discuss salary. Understood. Perhaps. Yep. Um, but I would, um, unless anybody has an objection, we don't need to wait further or, or I know we need to get this done, so. Yeah. Because uh, we only have Nancy for a limited time. Yeah. Uh, through the COVID yeah. situation. Uh, will you be around next Tuesday evening? Can you I can be, for sure. Stop into the yeah. selectman's office and we can see if we can uh, yeah, that's agree on salary and because um, we have to work with what we have and what Nancy's got right. and see if it all works out. But yeah. Yeah. What time works for you? Um, six. 15 maybe? Okay. We'll do our regular stuff and you don't Perfect. have to sit through that. And All right. Sounds we'll, good. Uh, sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate it. Perfect. Thank I was you. just kidding about the call. Thank I know. You you I appreciate it though. It's he doesn't nice have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, to lighten things up a little bit. Okay. All right. So, um, with no further business, I will um, entertain a motion to enter executive session um, under exception number one. And we'll reconvene only to adjourn. To adjourn. Correct. So moved. Second. Motion made second. All in favor? Jason Petrich, yes. Dale Kiley, yes. John Tripp, yes. Thank you. Okay, good night. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Good night. Have a good night.